Now we have Mario talking. Can everyone hear me? No? How about now? Good? You good? Hi, I'm Ario, and uh, I am a user experience guy. I start off at Microsoft, and I've been at Real Networks for the last four years working on Real Arcade, the casual gaming service. And uh, today we're going to talk about mortality and the user experience. Kind of morose, but stick with me. So I'm going to read directly off this slide, and that will be the only one I do that on. We have a finite amount of time on Earth. Life is full of cool things to do and experience. There are things that needlessly take time and energy away from us. If you design, <laughs> if you design anything, be mindful of this at all times, and we need experiences that return time back to us. So, yeah, next slide. It's coming soon. But, um, yeah, so this... <laughs> Did it freeze? So, yeah, it blazes this in your mind. So there's, there are two categories of things in my life. There's things I want to think about and things I don't want to think about. And I want to spend as much time as possible thinking about stuff on that side and doing, thi and doing things on that side. Huh? So the average American spends these thing, this amount of time doing these activities, which I think is neither good nor bad. You could make whatever judgments you want on it. Um, you know, maybe the TV one is kind of depressing, but the sleep one is kind of cool. You know, we're, we're going to need to sleep. What is it though? What are those those values for these three things? How much time have we all spent looking at that? How much time have we spent dealing with spam or dealing with re-imaging re, re our machine because of this? I mean, it's a lot of a lot of time if you're. Windows person. But on the flip, flip side, that's my mom, and she's never used a computer before. And over Thanksgiving holidays, I took this thing to my house. And I was like, let's play tennis. And she didn't really think that she could play tennis as a video game. So, um, you know, I just, I was pretty astounded that she could just pick up this device and just started playing. And she was totally delighted. She had the time of her life. So I was trying to think about why is it that, you know, th this particular device and experience is the first time she's ever stepped into the video game electronic world. And I think it's because of the, of the learning curve. I mean, directly we're mapping the behavior of the swing of the tennis racket with this device, whereas before I would have to say, okay, mom, hold this foreign object you've never heard, you've never held before, and you're going to have to press this red button every time you want to swing the ball. She's just not going to get that. Another user experience um, that is kind of difficult for people is exercise, kind of going off your marathon thing. I run, but sometimes I don't know if I'm running hard enough or if I'm going too slow or if I'm in my target heart rate zone or all these mystery things. But recently, I went and I got one of those things, a heart rate monitor. And at the gym that I go to, to the treadmills that I have that, that they have are all hooked up to read the heart, mate, heart rate monitor signal. So as I'm running, the treadmill is actually adjusting itself to my heart rate. I don't have to think about it. I don't have to spend any time worrying about am I in the right heart rate? Or am, I, am I going too fast? Am I going too slow? And then uh, the geek in me can go home and infrared the data to my PC. And then Polar has this nice software where I can actually see my, my rate. And then I can also see my heart rate up here. So I, ha I can collect data and that motivates me to see my progress. Another experience is with music. In, the, in today's world, you have physical objects like CDs and vinyl, and you have virtual places like iTunes. Still, you have a problem of there's a lot of stuff out there. I have to download music. I have to go find it. I have to get my head around, you know, okay, which, which artist am I going to download? But with Rhapsody, they have this great feature where you can uh, make a custom channel. So I put in 10 of my favorite artists, and I say, these are the artists that I like the most. And because all the music is in the cloud and on the on the server, I don't ever have to worry about downloading songs, getting partial songs. I made a specific channel for just the kind of music I like. I plug in the player uh, when I go when I go to bed at night. It charges it. It puts all the music that I want on there. It's great. And you know anybody can use this. And you, now you don't have to worry about you know getting new music. It's just constantly updating itself. So a few other places that I think could use this kind of thinking: um, operating systems. I don't want to see any more spinning uh, hourglasses. I think video games have a huge lots of hurdles that they can jump. I recently was looking at condos and stuff, and that whole experience, trying to find a new place to live, is pretty difficult. Um, managing finances and then staying, involved, staying informed about the world around us was that last one. And this is my visual way, I think, of blogs and trying to keep up with RSS feeds. Um, <laughs> It's, it's completely overwhelming, and, and if Scott Birkin is in the audience, we, at Mind Camp 1, we, he, was, he asked, you know, how many feeds are you guys reading? And people were like, over 200. He's like, why are you reading that many feeds? And I, I, you know, I think it's a question I come back to a lot. So up here we have Neo getting his head jacked.
to the, the net so he can, he can uh, learn Kung Fu instantly. And there you have a, a, a caveman painting. And I think we're somewhere in the middle. And my, my, my axis here is time and how much information you can actually stick inside of your head. And so I think as time goes on, we're slowly approaching this point, but it's a dangerous question. And I think the next slide has a book that talks about this um, called uh, Paradox of Choice. And this is a book where I, I suggest everybody read where this is the, really the question I think that's in front of all of us is finding that sweet spot for all of these different experiences so that we don't overwhelm people but they feel that they have enough choice to make a decision. So um, if you're interested in this kind of stuff, talk to me. This is my blog, SerialRobots.com. And um, yeah, thanks.